This week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. Steve and Jordan hit the Rhone Highlands in search of stunning views, scenic balds, and a delicious trailside cocktail recipe. Get out more. Welcome to Backpacker Get Out More TV. I'm Randy Propster, and for the next 15 weeks, I'll be your host as we take you on an adventure exploring this amazing country. We're going to visit 15 incredible backpacking destinations. Along the way, we're going to share with you skills every backpacker should know, and of course, talk about a ton of the gear that can enhance your experience along the way. We're here to inform and inspire you, so please let us know what you'd like to see on an upcoming episode. If you have questions, we have answers. We're here we'll chat please make sure you leave a comment below also be sure to hit that like button hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll be informed every time we pump out some new content and also pay attention to the links that will pop up both in the video and in the description below so that you can enter for your chance to win. We've got some amazing weekly sweepstakes with some outstanding brand partners who have provided gear. This week, you could win gear from Darn Tough, Mystery Ranch, Lakey, Sawyer Products, Oboe's Footwear, Jet Boil, Yellowstone Select Kentucky Bourbon. All sorts of amazing products to be had. So make sure you're signing up and entering to win. Join us today and each week for the next 15 weeks as we bring to life Backpacker, get out more TV. Before Steve and Jordan hit the trail, they had a chance to stop into the Mass General Store in Waynesville, North Carolina, an employee-owned shop that's been at it since 1883, so I would definitely say they know a thing or two about helping you plan and prepare for your adventure. A gateway to adventure, we like to call Mass General Store. They were able to talk to Joey, get the download on their route, learn some things about the conditions they'd be backpacking in, and pick up a few pieces of gear to help them out along the way. Let's take a look now at what you would experience if you were to stop in to Mass General Store. Well, the Mass General Store in Waynesville is located near the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Inside, you can find a complete outfitter shop um, filled with hiking and backpacking gear, footwear, and as a general store, you can even find a bit more, including comfortable clothing, tasty foods and snacks, and hundreds of old-fashioned candies. You know, Mass General Store, we, we employ locals and we play where we live, so if, you, if you're interested in knowing um, where to go and what to do, um, we've got a great staff that can educate you on that and um, kind of show you how to get there safely and have a great time out. As far as outdoor activity in the area, Waynesville is nested in a valley between two national forests and the uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and the AT runs right through our backyard. You can fly fish, mountain bike, trail run, hike, um, anything from a two hour hike to a four day hike, we've got it for you. Um, the staff's real educated on that and can kind of direct you in, um, kind of send you in the direction you need to go in order to pursue multiple sports. As a matter of fact, we got Steve and Jordan out um, just the other day in some good old darn tough socks so their feet were nice and comfy on the trail. If you're in the area for a hike and you're looking to get out on the trail, come visit us at Mass General Store. We'll get you outfitted and educated so you can have a good safe time um, and maybe even send you out with a couple of hard candies to enjoy out there. I have had my cook set for over 10 years, so it's time for me to get an upgrade, and I've been told Jet Bowl is the way to go. Dave here is helping me out, so what is it that you love about Jet Bowl? Well, um, obviously first and foremost, compactability with everything, including the fuel in there. It's got a little cover on the flux rings. Pack it all, throw it in there, everything's protected. When you need it, pull it out, screw it together. Most of them have a piezo ignition, so you just turn the gas on and it's good going. Um, I'm on my third one. I've had them since the original model. Um, they're just fast and efficient. You can cook in them, just boil water in them. Um, they are adjustable, just like a lot of stoves. You can really simmer on it or you can rock and boil it. Um, this will boil that, this whole container in less than two minutes. 
so Sweet. super fuel efficient. Um, yeah, they're they're good to go. That's for sure. Uh, all right, so time for me to upgrade. I think I'm definitely gonna go with the Jet Boil. It sounds like they've got a lot of options, a lot of cool features that make it really easy and a fast option. So definitely think this is gonna be my go-to here. Yep. Thank you I for your help. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. Again, I've had mine for 10 years, and so I'm excited to try this guy instead. Having local experts like Joey at Mass General Store is absolutely priceless when you're planning and preparing for your hike. They can certainly ensure that you're going to have everything you need to be successful out there. When you're looking for the right piece of gear, that local knowledge really is important. But it's also important that you pay close attention to what the gear has to say. And when the gear talks, we listen. And that's what brings us to this week's segment we like to call Just the Specs. All right, y'all, so I know for me, knowing the technical specifications on a piece of gear can definitely make or break whether I decide to add that piece of gear to my pack. Um, not only does it help you understand exactly what that gear is capable of, but it also lets you quickly compare different pieces of gear to figure out exactly what you want. So this week, I'm gonna talk you guys through the tech specs of a Sawyer Mini Filters Water Squeeze. All right, so first thing for the weight, it actually only weighs about two ounces. And if you can see, it fits in the palm of your hand. So it's really small and lightweight. So it's not gonna weigh your pack down or take up a lot of space. So the Sawyer water filters are made from a hollow fiber fill material with an absolute pore size of only 0.1 micron, which means that it filters out your particulates, your microplastics, and also bacteria such as protozoa, E. coli, Giardia, and more. So it basically is just a bunch of really tiny tubes in there and you get all that filtration. It's super easy to use. The flow rate is really good. And not to mention the longevity is really awesome too. So you actually get up to 100,000 gallons of use from this thing. And it also comes with a system to clean it out to you know, prolong that longevity. So overall, really awesome product. From staying hydrated to staying bug free, Sawyer products have been a staple in my pack for years now. Today we're taking a look at Sawyer water filtration systems. Whether you choose to squeeze or let gravity do the work, staying hydrated is a key part of backpacking. And with their uh, lightweight design and ease of use, they've become my favorite pick for the backcountry. To learn more about these or any of Sawyer's products, head on over to sawyer.com or visit the link in the description below. When the gear talks, we listen. It's very important to pay attention to the specs when you're trying to find that perfect piece of gear for that perfect adventure. It's also important to pay attention to those local experts when they provide you tips and skills, skills every backpacker should know as a matter of fact, and that's what we're gonna do when we check in with River Sports Outfitters in Knoxville, Tennessee. Their team has been trained to ensure we have all the information we need to properly plan for our trips. Ed McAllister and his team over there in Knoxville are definitely another gateway to adventure for the Appalachian Mountains. Before we check in with Jacob, who's gonna show Jordan and Steve the perfect way to properly fit a backpack, let's take a look at what you'll find on a visit to River Sports Outfitters. Good afternoon, I'm Ed McAllister from River Sports Outfitters in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're celebrating our 37th and going on 38th year, so we would invite you to come by and see us. We specialize primarily in boating of all sorts, biking and a climbing gym, plus backpacking, camping. In addition, we sell clothing and footwear to meet every need, so we just love what we do. Live your passion. One of the most common mistakes that people make out there on the trail is not properly fitting a pack. And so what we're gonna go through today is how to appropriately fit a pack so you guys can remain comfortable and enjoy yourselves out there on the trail. 
This is the Mystery Ranch Scree 32. It's an excellent all-around pack that gives you the versatility for both an urban assault pack, because you can remove the hip belt down there. You have a lightweight day pack with lots of versatility, so you can get out there, do whatever you'd like to do out in the woods and come back home. And it's actually large enough to be used as an overnight bag as well. So if you want to pack up a bag, a tent, it's still large enough to do everything you want to do in a day. Sweet. So the pack is made of a 210 denier fabric, which makes it super rugged and durable. And so this pack can really take a beating. And it's got the three zippers on the front, which allows you to pull the pack completely open and really get access to all of your, all of your stuff on the inside. What really makes this pack special and sets it apart is we've got this patented Futura yoke system all the way down the back of the pack, which allows us to make micro adjustments very quickly to fit a wide range of safes and sizes. One of the most overlooked adjustments is going to be making sure that the height of the pack is set up appropriately. Looks like you're good to go. With the pack right here, we've got a perfect fit around the front of the shoulders there, a little bit of space above the shoulders so the pack is resting primarily right there against that lumbar and all of that weight right there on the hips. This is why it's so important to have a pack accurately fitted to you and that's what we do here at River Sports Outfitters. So if you're in the area, if you're local to Knoxville, drop on by and we can give you a hand. And if you're a little bit further out, check us out online at riversportsoutfitters.com or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Mystery Ranch is on a mission to make the world's best backpacks for a wide variety of outdoor enthusiasts. Built to be extremely configurable with a concentration on organization and accessibility. Plus, these bags are bomb-proof. They are purpose-built to assure not only usability, but durability. To learn more about Mystery Ranch backpacks, visit mysteryranch.com or check out the links in the description below. Steve and Jordan have had a chance to get the full route download. We got the skills upgrade, and now we'll find them making their final preparations at the trailhead before they head in towards Roan Mountain. Let's check in with Steve and Jordan now. So we're here at Carver's Gap, getting ready to start our AT uh, section hike. We're gonna go uh, all the way north to 19E. Uh, we're gonna take our time because it's a really pretty section. So we're gonna do two nights. First night on Jane, second night on maybe Hump Mountain, uh, maybe a little bit past it, depending on how we're feeling tomorrow. Uh, but as we load up, I just kind of wanted to go over how we're loading our packs. Right now I'm sporting a Mystery Ranch Glacier 70. I've already got my sleeping bag down here, at the bottom of the pack kind of get some of that heavier load up towards the back of my pack. So, next is going in the tent. I take mine out of the bag so I can kind of fit them better to the direction that I want. Poles and pad. We kind of put in the heavier things right up against our back. That way, you know, it's not pulling us back or it's not too high and pushing down on us or, or too low and putting all that weight on our hips. We're gonna right up against the back, that way it can be evenly uh, carried between the two. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Ultralight is great. If you can get light materials, do it. So you can carry all the camera gear you need. <laughs> camera gear in here. Jordan's lacing up her shoes. What kind of socks are you wearing today, Jordan? John Tough socks. Ooh, tell me about those. They are from Merino Wool Blend. So they have antimicrobial properties, so they keep your feet from smelling. They also keep your feet really warm. They are by far my favorite socks. I got rid of every single other pair of socks that I own. Big fan. Oh yeah. We're also trying out these uh, Lecky Vario Carbon Trekking Poles today. Pretty cool, quick lock, carbon fiber, so really, really light. And Andre, we were telling you, uh, you know, when you first start hiking, you know, you might need a little extra help while you're building up those muscles. Well, these are all the help you'll ever need. So, for the first part of our hike, we're climbing Round Bald. It's just under 6,000 feet. 
choked full of flame azaleas and rhododendrons this time of year. And uh, the neat part of the hike is uh, we're kind of going through this spooky old balsam forest. Let's go. The final preparations are being made and you can tell the excitement is building. Steve and Jordan can't wait to get out there on that trail. But before we join them on trail, it's time for a segment we like to call a closer look. This will be our deeper dive. Let's take a look at some features, some aspects of a piece of gear that just make all the difference. So now, a closer look. This week's Closer Look, we're going to take a look at trekking poles and zoom in on the innovations that allow them to be adjustable and collapsible so they fit really quickly and easily into your pack. So these poles are the Microvario Carbon Series and they have two different locking systems that allow it to be collapsible and adjustable. The first one is the Speed Lock 2 system. So you've got this little latch with a dial to tighten it down. You can quickly adjust the height of this. So depending on the terrain, you might need it shorter, you might need it longer. That snaps into place, easy as that. Second one is right here. It's called the core locking device or CLD. This actually has to be open for it to work. Basically, you just push this button and then the whole thing breaks down. You can pull it apart. Super tiny, really easy to stuff your pack really quick. So the combination of these two locks together make these poles super lightweight, adjustable and collapsible. And that's your closer look. Lucky trekking poles are a great addition to your pack to help with extra stability and help take pressure off your knees and ankles. Lucky trekking poles come in a variety of lightweight materials and styles. The innovative handles are super comfortable and they offer a unique adjustable strap system. Plus, they break down really easily to store in your pack when you're not using them. To learn more about the products from Lucky, head on over to lucky.com or click the link in the description below. It really is important to take a closer look at those features when you're picking the perfect gear for your adventures. And I know that those lakey trekking poles with those amazing features are gonna benefit Steve and Jordan while they're out on trail. Speaking of Steve and Jordan, they are out on trail. They're exploring Roan Mountain and I think we should check in and see how the adventure is going. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? That slept so good. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. A little pee in a pod. <laughs> How'd you sleep, Jordan? I slept great. I slept pretty good. Jordan <laughs> got a lot more sleep than me. The stars were really good last night, so a few of us stayed up and counted some shooting stars, made some wishes, and then I heard snoring. I got cold and so I put the sleeping bag over my head and then it was just too comfy so then I fell asleep. I did get to see a couple shooting stars though. So. Yeah. So uh, I'm doing the good old cinnamon raisin bread with some peanut butter and honey, quick and simple. Um, you know we can't have fires up here on the bald so it's kind of nice to just have something quick and easy. I did instant grits and spiced it up a little bit with some fresh cheese and bacon bits so very good, very warm. Mm -hmm. Can't forget the coffee. <laughs> a little bit of last night's bourbon in it. It's just what we needed. <laughs> so Kane hurt his hip. Did We're making Sage carry the food since she's the young Sage, buck. Sage, come here. But she don't want to put it on today. <laughs> Sage. <laughs> Day two, northbound on the AT. So the Roan Highlands are the longest section, um, I think, on the entire AT of Balts. And uh, for those of you that don't live in the southeast, a bald is kind of like a mountaintop that is clear, uh, almost like a big field that's sitting almost at 6,000 feet in the sky uh, we are right now. So we're kind of traversing uh, a grand total of five balds today, which will be really cool. Let's see where we're at. Back here. How y'all doing? Making our way up a little hump. We originally uh, had thought that 
you know, it's, it's kind of like summer here already. We thought we were going to be really warm, but it was actually pretty chilly last night. So we decided to bring our, our cooler weather bags with us instead of the, the 40 ULs like we originally thought we'd pack. Uh, and these served us really well last night. This is the Anvil 15 we're both kind of sharing right now. Yep. Part of uh, the Big Agnes sleep system. My goodness, there's Big Hump. How y'all doing back there? We just came off of uh, Little Hump and we were trekking through this little forest, kind of sneaks you around through two little patches and then boom, there's Big Hump. We can't wait for it. All right, y'all, last spring before camp, topping off the water bottles. How are you doing it today? Well, we are both using the Sawyer system to filter our water. I don't know about you, Steven, but when I first learned how to backpack and camp and stuff, I had an old pump filter. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh my gosh, Awful. those things were terrible. I mean, they worked, but it took forever. My arm was always exhausted. This thing is super easy. You just fill up the bag. You can also use just any kind of plastic water bottle in the filter. Where's mine? This is the filter. That's all you need. Screws right on it, and you can drink straight out of it, or you can filter it into a new bottle. So we've got about a thousand feet of climbing today. We knocked off a little last night, came in uh, early, did about two miles last night, and we'll kind of do probably about eight today, I think. Um, those lucky poles are going to come in handy today. Those poles are going to come in handy <laughs> with all that climbing. Uh, it's kind of rooty out here. You know, you get a lot of people on these trails, so they're a little, little weathered, so it's good to have some poles to save you in case you slip. And uh, the, the views are kind of hard to beat, so it's extra good to have poles because you can actually look out, and if you slip or trip, you can save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're clumsy like me, it's just helpful to have yeah. extra points of contact at all times. <laughs> Check it out. If you follow this line, that is the AT coming up. Big hump disappears in the woods and then it pops back out on little hump over there. And it's gonna go up towards grassy, over Jane, over round, down through Carver's Gap and up over around High Knob. It's getting to be that time of day we're gonna set up camp and take these packs off and enjoy ourselves a little more. Okay, so we made some friends on the trail earlier and we're big fans of trail magic. So arrangements. That's it. There's the bar. Yeah, bar. <laughs> Kitchen right there over there. The backyard that matters. Yeah. Yellowstone bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste, perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone Bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. For this week's backcountry cocktail, we are gonna make the caldera. This is an awesome drink. You can drink it hot or cold. It only requires four ingredients total, and all of them are backpacking friendly. So here we go. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pour two ounces of your bourbon whiskey into a cup. I have saved you the trouble of step two, which is to make your tea. Um, really kind of any cinnamon flavored tea will work. So you're gonna to wanna to make that beforehand. Um, if you're at your house, you can put this over ice. It's really good cold also, but we don't have ice out here, so we're gonna drink it hot. So I've got my cinnamon tea already made in my jet boil, so I'm gonna add that. Next thing you're gonna need is a half ounce of honey. 
Um, again, this is one of those things you can add more or less depending on if you like your drink sweeter or not as sweet. And then the last thing is a dash of lemon juice. Something to make this a little bit more backcountry friendly drink that I've done is I put the lemon juice in an old Mio squeeze bottle and then I've got honey in a little um, screw top Nalgene. That way you're not carrying these big giant bulky items out into the backcountry with you. And then you just give it a good stir and now it is time to try it. That's delicious. Cheers. Just like those trailside cocktail recipes take the perfect ingredients, sometimes an ingredient or feature in your gear can make all the difference. This week, for our forgotten feature segment, we were able to stop in to the local hiker in Spartanburg, South Carolina and catch up with owner Kathy and her associate Katie so that they could bring us up to speed on a feature that you may be underutilizing. Spartanburg is a beautiful town and the local hiker is definitely the go-to shop. Let's take a look at what you might find at the local hiker and check in with Kathy and Katie for this week's Forgotten Feature. The mission of the local hiker is to educate, encourage, and equip. Educating by offering classes and leave no trace, safety, and many more. Encouraging customers to enjoy the outdoors and a wide variety of activities, from hiking and camping to trail running and climbing. And equipping customers with all the gear necessary to safely experience their adventures. The friendly staff loves helping folks find different ways of enjoying the outdoors, especially when they return and share stories and pictures from the trail. Today we wanted to talk to you a little bit about one of the 10 essentials that is oftentimes forgotten. How many of us have grabbed our backpack to head out the door and realize we forgot our bug protection? So we wanted to tell you about a couple of products we carry here at the shop by Sawyer. One is Picaridin and the other is Permethrin. So the forgotten features that we're talking about with Picaridin are that it's a deep free alternative to deep filled bug sprays. It's safe for use on skin and gear and repels mosquitoes, ticks, biting, biting flies and chiggers. It has two application forms, either a spray or a lotion, and both are safe to use on infants, children, and adults. And it's also pregnancy safe. And permethrin provides a second barrier to um, your gear and clothing from bugs, ticks, mosquitoes, biting flies, all of those annoying critters. Outside of those, it also protects against an additional 55 insects that I cannot even name. <laughs> so, um, but you can treat your tent, sleeping bags, backpacks, clothes, shoes, um, hammocks, just any gear that you take out with you, it will last for six weeks or six washings. And it um, not only repels insects, it actually kills them once they come in contact with something that has permethrin on it, it's absorbed into the skin and the insect will die off. So different effect than the picaridin. Um, I've had experiences where deep filled bug sprays have worn away at my gear and when I found picaridin and like was able to use it and saw that it didn't wear away at my gear, wear, with, wear away at the straps of my pack when I sprayed it on my clothes, it really helped me take better care of my gear and I've used it ever since. We're located in Spartanburg, South Carolina. If you want to come see us, we're at the corner of Liberty and Maine. You can also follow us on social media if you're not local to that area, um, at The Local Hiker for Instagram and The Local Hiker on Facebook. And our website is thelocalhiker.com. Katie and Kathy, thank you so very much. The Local Hiker is definitely a shop you should check out if you're in the Spartanburg, South Carolina area. They are the gear experts and we appreciate that forgotten feature segment. In addition to a forgotten feature, there is sometimes the wrong features in the wrong gear. Every now and then, it just takes a slight upgrade to completely change the experience. And that brings us to this week's segment we like to call Instant Upgrades. For this week's Instant Upgrade, we're talking socks. I'm an avid fan of Darn Tough socks because of their merino wool. I think cotton is a thing of the past, and so should blisters, hot spots, and other foot problems. Um, my Darn Tough's been taking care of me every step of the way, and with things like a lifetime unconditional warranty, uh, it's kind of tough to beat.
You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet, and that's why we love Darn Tough socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. It really is amazing how changing out one little element of your gear can make a big difference. It can have a huge impact on your experience. And I know Stephen Jordan had a better time out there with comfortable feet thanks to that merino wool and those darn tough socks. Speaking of Stephen Jordan, they've completed their Roan Mountain hike. Let's check in with them at the trailhead now to get the full trail recap. Went with the mountain mocha this morning, super easy. Uh, coffee, went with the instant coffee this time. Uh, mixed in half a bag of hot chocolate and you got yourself an easy mocha. So we just dropped down into the forest. Our last few miles are gonna be all downhill, so I'm relying heavily on these trekking poles. And we'll get out at 19E. As you know, a lot of us have been stuck inside for a few months, and so as we start this Get Out More TV and start the Get Out More tour, we'd really love to include some local people, some local flavor, and uh, bring some friends along or have some guests along the way. So this episode we had two, uh, one being Andre, who could only make it for one night, but we made it count. We had a blast mm, with Andre. That was great, yeah. But uh, Steven here, this is Steven Reinhold. He just joined us for the whole trip. Uh, he's kind of the person that we wanted to highlight. Uh, down here in the south uh, for quite a numerous amount of reasons, uh, <laughs> but... Why don't you start things off and tell us a little bit about... Who you are. Who you are, what yeah. you do. Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on this trip. It's been amazing. Um, so my name is Steven Reinhold, and along with Steve Yoakum, I run the Appalachian Adventure Company. Uh, we started that a few years ago and uh, kind of focus on a variety of adventurous activities, but. What I'm most proud of is that we kind of pursue our passion through the, through the adventure company, or our different outdoor passions. Uh, some of those are you know, getting new people into the outdoors, um, protecting our outdoor spaces and things of that nature. And, and yeah, so just really kind of focusing our efforts on supporting causes that go along those lines. Do good and have fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you think get out more means to you what is what is getting outside and getting out more do for you as a person well for me you know we talked about this a little bit earlier when I'm outside that's where I find my best self and so that's a gift to be able to give that experience to somebody else and have them be able to help find their best self Absolutely. in the outdoors so Absolutely. for me that's uh yeah you know like we said you know trying to focus on getting new people into the outdoors you know for years we've supported uh, an organization called big city mountaineers uh, backpackers been just a huge supporter of that organization too and BCM. yeah they take <laughs> kids from all across the country on wilderness mentoring trips and uh, me and steve have done some uh, fundraising climbs and taking kids on on trips as the mentors and that's been amazing uh, one of our, our newest partnerships is with the organization called black folks camp too uh, and they're focused on kind of breaking down the barriers of entry for people of color into the outdoors. And uh, that, that's great for us, you know? Like I said, you know, just, you know, being able to pay it forward and give other people that experience is, is just a blessing. So um, highlights for this trip for you, what were some of the things that are sticking out to you, uh, top memories? Oh man, just honestly, just getting to go with you guys. I mean, you guys are like family to me. I love you like a brother. It's been so neat getting to <laughs> meet Jordan over the last few years, and I think you guys are just perfect for this tour. Mm -hmm. uh, backpacker couldn't have got better people, and Thanks. yeah, just just getting to experience it and, and be a part of it. Uh, the trail was great. I can't believe how great the weather was. Uh, yeah. Sunset, sunrise last uh, yesterday was just epic, and yeah, it's just a great experience all in all. I think day one's favorite was being with Andre and just seeing the wonder on his eyes of just everything. Everything was new to him and it was just, I mean, we have mentioned it a little bit. You almost come 
become kind of desensitized to it when you've done it so often. And so to see it through someone's eyes who's never done it before is a really, really cool experience. Absolutely. Andre, if you're watching this, you made our day. You did. Uh, all the cool things that you were stoked about. Sometimes, you know, I try not to ever take them for granted, but every once in a while yeah. you see through somebody else's eyes, it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, just on a personal level, the climb up to Big Hump, I've done that two other times and this is like the strongest I felt doing it. Nice. So that felt pretty good. I think the trekking poles honestly had a lot to do with that. Oh, yeah. The trekking poles were the uh, gear hero for me this trip personally. So awesome. Yeah. What about you? Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, coming back to visit the the humps. It's been a minute since I've been over here, and it's definitely one of my favorite areas. So getting to share that with you three, meeting the folks we did last night on top of the mountain, um, and then this sunrise this morning was oh. was pretty killer. We, we've had awesome light um yeah awesome weather no complaints this has been no, wonderful been so uh, i guess after this um we're gonna Hit load up we, we took the opportunity here at uh doll flats to let some gear dry out it was a little moist on top of the mountain last night so it looks like the stuff's probably dry i think it's time to pack up and yeah. say go get us a cold beer and a hot burger yeah sounds good let's do it Would you say we earned a beer or what? Yes. Let's do it. In a burger, in a chair. <laughs> Welcome to the station at 19E. Steve and Jordan are obviously having a great time out there on trail and it's really special to be able to share the trail and those experiences with close friends and I know having outdoor adventure extraordinaire Steven Reinhold out there with them is certainly a treat. Steven was able to tell us a little bit more about a project that we find absolutely fantastic and it's an organization called Black Folks Camp 2. We were so intrigued we had to track down founder and president Earl B. Hunter Jr. to learn more about his mission, a mission designed to improve access, make it more fun and more interesting for black folks to get outdoors. All right, so we are so excited to have a special guest join us this week on Backpacker Get Out More TV. We've got Earl B. Hunter Jr., the founder and president of Black Folks Camp 2. Earl's on a mission. It's a mission I absolutely love, trying to get more diversity out there in the outdoor space, trying to make it easier, more interesting, and more fun to get black folks into the outdoors. So right on. tell me a little bit about you, man. I know Woo! you've got the bug. You've, you've, you've got the outdoor passion. Listen. You're trying to spread it. This is a this is an honor though because um, I love to spread the news and uh, to share with people about what we do and how we get it done. So with that being said, uh, my name is Earl B. Hunter Jr. Um, I actually uh, am again the founder and president of Black Folks Camp too. But more so than anything though, uh, I always uh, I consider myself a change agent, right? I uh, I like to see things uh, like to see things change for the better, and uh, that's what we're on a we're on a mission to do that. That said. Uh, I came into the, in the camping industry uh, five years ago. Um, I came in the industry, had no prior camping experience. I had never really been camping a day in my life. I was a Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Italian suit wearing executive from another company and wow. uh, traveling all over the world, uh, making deals here, China, Vietnam, all these places, right? And then I had an opportunity to go work for a company as the vice president of sales, uh, Sylvan Sport. Yeah, where we made uh, uh, pop-up campers and uh, gear equipment uh, for the outdoor industry. Um, a very unconventional uh, way that we grew the business. Uh, that's one thing that I saw that was missing in this industry. Through all the, uh, all the uh, uh, events I've gone to, all the conferences I've gone through, everything I've gone through, I found myself being one of the only, if not the only, black executive at these events. And I knew yeah. something had to change, man. And, totally. and, 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 and here's the, probably the most beautiful thing of it all is the campfire that's in our logo, that everybody loves the campfire, right? Sure. Well, everybody who knows about the campfire loves it, 
But the people who do not know about it, which are, which are a ton of black folks, when they really, really get around this campfire, what you'll find is the communication, the conversations that we'll have, not just with black folks, not just with black folks. That's the beauty thing about our company. We don't promote just black folks camping with black folks. We promote black folks camping with any and everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that campfire, it really does serve as the portal to amazing conversations for everyone, for everyone, black, yeah. white, green, or yellow, your race, your gender, or your, your age does not matter, my friend. One of the things I always say to everyone is that one of the reasons why we're in such a, a flux and where we are is our, in our country is because we haven't been having we haven't been talking to one another about these things. We haven't been communicating so about true. these things. And so what happens is when things, when you don't communicate, they ferment. And when they ferment, uh, they, 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 they take on a world of their own, right? And so when you don't talk about things, you tend to assume things, right? And see, when you assume things, what happens is, is that now you don't know what the other person is thinking. And so now you, you, you have a, a idea or a false idea of what people may be thinking and then you operate in your life that way with that particular individual, right? It's sure. the same thing with black folks in the outdoors. If we, if we haven't been, if the knowledge hadn't been shared with us how amazing the outdoors is, we will assume that the outdoors should be, shouldn't be kind to us, right? If, yeah. the, if the history of the outdoors of, or history of the, uh, of the woods and nature is a bad thing for us, we will always assume that's a bad thing. We just want black folks to get out and go camping, right? Absolutely. And so the, the third, probably most important thing, other than inviting black folks to, uh, to go camping, is when you do invite them, right? Do not assume that they are not afraid. Do not assume that what, you're, what, what seems normal to you is not necessarily normal to them. This is what we're trying to tell the industry, is that... Yeah. You, we, we have to be careful is that we, we are, we're pushing and pulling. We're inviting black folks to camp, right? We're doing all these amazing things. But the industry has to get prepared for this. The industry has to get prepared, pre prepared for individuals to come into an industry that has really no clue about the industry. So the questions that you may think that are just an uh, everyday question may not be an everyday question to this particular individual. So, it's, so, so we're... we're, we're we're walking the line, right? Mm -hmm. We're walking the line, we're walking the line, we're walking the line. Because the same things that I'm telling you right now that the industry, that, that has to happen to get more black folks to camp, we, we have to remove generational fear, we have to add knowledge, and we have to invite them. Those are the same things that happened to me and for me before I went backpacking. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, I was... I met these gentlemen. I was the uh, the master of ceremony at the Outdoor Economy Conference 2019. Uh, I introduced our company there October the 10th last year. I shared with the crowd that a change is going to come. As a matter of fact, I sang uh, uh, Sam Cooke, a change is going to come. I love it. And, um, and there were some people that were listening. And those individuals, they, they, they did the reverse, man. They invited me to go backpacking. Yeah. They shared, uh. they shared knowledge with me about the trip, right? Yeah. The pack list. Here's where we're going. This is what's going to happen, Earl. Here's what you need the equipment you need to get. And then as we got further into the trip, right at the trailhead, they helped remove fears for me, yeah. right? By telling me, Earl, if this happens, this is what you should do. If this happens, these are the things you should do. They didn't assume that I knew these things. And that made the trip, it made it fun for me, but it made it exciting though, because I felt like I can trust the individuals that I was with, right? I, I absolutely love it, Earl. So, you know, and I think our audience, I know for a fact the outdoor community can get around that idea. Invite, provide knowledge and break down fear. You've got break down a fear, great, my friend. great plan that's in place. I know we can find out more about all of this at your website. You mentioned blackfolkscamp2.com. Correct. Uh, I know we can also follow you. You've got some great social content. We, we will find you on Facebook, probably Instagram, probably Twitter too, right? I'm right on, man. 
Right on. I, I'm so happy that I was able to have this conversation. I, I love being able to introduce your organization and your company to our audience. I think you're doing an amazing thing. I love your mission. And uh, it's that simple, folks. You got to invite. You got to share some knowledge. You got to break down some fears. Let's get all of us around that campfire, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Cheers. Well, hey, everybody. My name's Woody DePerna. I'm the footwear buyer at J&H Outdoor Store in Lexington, Kentucky. And I want to talk a little bit today about uh, some footwear and how it should be fit and some things that will help you out to be more comfortable on the trail. I think that footwear arguably is the most important piece of gear that you might purchase. So we believe that a proper fit and the proper sock combination is the number one thing that's going to keep you blister free once you hit the trail. I think that uh, Ovo's footwear in particular offers some features that will help you out in that regard. One of them being the insole that they put in their shoes, which is a very high quality orthotic. It goes into every pair of shoes that they make. It's gonna give you the arch support, the midfoot support to keep your heel planted in the right spot on the boot and to minimize internal friction. Sock, I've said it many times before, because I think the sock is really your first layer of defense. And we recommend sticking with a material that's going to wick and basically maintain body temperature. That could be a merino wool sock. That could be a synthetic sock, like a Cool Max sock. Many good brands. Darn Tough is, is one of our favorites here at the store because of the durability. Can't be um, guaranteed to yeah, send it's, them back. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty darn good guarantee on Darn Tough, too. You, you wear them out, they're going to replace them for you. So we've got a ton of hiking in our future, and you think this might be the boot for me? Could be, could be. It, it, it's all about it's all about the shape of your foot and the shape of that boot and how it fits. <laughs> now this looks familiar. I think we saw this on the cover of a magazine somewhere. Was that Backpackers Gear Guide? <laughs> so it, it certainly was. And Backpackers thought very highly of the boot. Our our initial customer reaction to it has been really spectacular. Um, Everybody seems to like the feel of them. Uh, early reports on trail have been really good. Uh, it's it's a, a great new offering from Ovos. It's going to be a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more athletic feel, and yet still give you the structure, the backbone, the angle support that you need when you, when you get off the pavement, when you're on those uneven terrains. This is a waterproof boot also. It features Ovos's uh, B-Drive membrane. Um, the orange piece kind of around the heel is a is an A3 chassis. It's going to give you uh, heel stabilization and it's going to extend up into the midfoot to give the boot structure and uh, support your, your arch and also facilitate a more efficient uh, heel to toe motion. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. <laughs> That's a lot of f***ing trees. That's this week's episode of Backpacker Get Out More TV. Be sure to come back and join us again next week as we continue to follow Steve and Jordan around the country. We'll be showing off more beautiful highlights from their on-trail experience, showing you skills every backpacker should know, and of course, making sure you're aware of the latest and greatest gear options that can enhance your next outdoor adventure. Be sure to check out the links in the description below to find more details about the brands, products, and retailers that we featured in this week's episode. Also, find the link to sign up for the gear giveaway all sorts of great products that will be given away so make sure you find that link and then click the like button subscribe and turn on those notifications so that we can inform you when we're going live again next week this week we're going to send you away with some true appalachian style mountain music thanks to the chatham rabbits so take it away guys and we'll see you next week on backpacker get out more tv We're here in our backyard in Chatham County, North Carolina, and uh, it's such a beautiful night. We thought we'd play you guys an acoustic version of our tune, Oxen, which Garden and Gun just released yesterday on all streaming platforms. And it's just a song about how important community is, and we just feel like now more than ever, that's an important message for us all to hear. So this is Oxen. One.
river rises and brings you to your knees. You find You find From the one beside you There's strength in numbers 